Hi, this is Jeff from the Ozark Mountains in Missouri, USA. Well, here we've got a Tandy Model 200 that somebody sent to me to work on. Uh, they said it wouldn't power up. When I applied power, it had the most interesting effect on the screen, so I thought it might be fun to look at together. This is kind of an unusual looking problem. So I'll get you pointed at the screen and we'll see what it's doing and see if we can't fix it. Let's get started. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this episode. They offer an excellent quick turn PCB prototyping service, which now has a free upgrade to the 150 160 temperature range. And this is PCBWay's ninth anniversary, and they're having lots of promotions, uh, coupons, sales, etc. So go on over to PCBWay and check them out. Okay, I am going to hook up power here and check that out. Kind of flashing of the screen, the power button doesn't do anything. Uh, where's the reset switch? Right there. Reset doesn't do anything. Yeah, so I don't know. That's kind of curious. And the contrast does seem to make a difference. That seems darker. That seems lighter, or maybe it's not doing anything at all. So I don't know. This could be something as simple as uh, the memory battery is not allowing it to boot up properly because it's so depleted. So we'll take it apart and we'll start by measuring the power supply. As you saw, I wasn't having any luck getting that center cover off of here, so I just pulled the, the bottom off. And the I didn't even have this rotated all the way up and the LCD ribbon was disconnected. So that part may have been just a, a disconnected ribbon to the LCD. Uh, this is the original battery. If I measure the voltage, I get about 0.68 volts. Um, that's definitely low enough. It's not going to allow this machine to boot up properly. So, um, and it's the original Yesu battery, so that'll need to be changed. The caps look fine. I've never really seen them be a problem on the Model 200. Uh, so we'll pop a new battery in here, uh, which should be pre-charged. We'll hook up the LCD and we'll see if we got lucky and that's all there was to it. Um, generally it's better to disconnect the ribbon from the LCD before you take this apart. Um, and it may have just been getting this pried up just a little bit was enough to unplug it because these ribbons are super duper short. But let me get a battery and then we'll pop that in there. Okay, I got it apart. I did finally get that uh, little curved cover going up to the LCD connection at the LCD, or I should say the LCD cable connection at the LCD. Those are always tricky to get apart. Um, I'll put a link below to a Model 200 video I did where I showed all about taking the case apart and that type of thing. These are always kind of a pain to work on. I didn't bother disconnecting the Option ROM RAM board since we're just replacing the battery here. I'm just tilting the battery out. The positive is on that side. So I'm just melting the solder and rotating the battery till it falls out. It's a lot easier to do with these guys. And we'll suck that solder out of there. <coughs> ah, didn't leave it on there long enough. You've got to let the tool stay on there long enough to melt all the solder. So we have one original battery to take off of there. Luckily, I keep these in stock. These, you know, if you check it every 20 years, 
There's not a big worry about it leaking everywhere. These don't leak, generally speaking, uh, catastrophically, unless they're stored in a really, really bad condition. Uh, then I don't think it would matter what kind of battery you had in it. Generally, the AA batteries leaking are a much bigger problem. I've done a super capacitor model on a Model 100, but generally I just put a modern nickel metal hydride in place of the old NICAD. The trickle charge is so slow that nickel metal hydride works just fine. All right, there we go. Now we have a new battery in there and that shield goes like that. Okay. Now we're ready to pop that big in, back in the case to try it out. And luckily this machine is nice and clean so we don't have any real cleanup to do. Improved my overhead camera mount slightly out of desperation because it was so bad it wanted to fall off and I almost dropped the camera a couple times. So I went all high tech and I'm using a C-clamp to attach to the shelf to attach the camera mount to. So Kind of a, a redneck rigged it up but it works really good and um, I think unless we get that big earthquake up in the St. Louis area and there's some serious aftershocks down this way I don't think it's going anywhere the last big earthquake up there um, was in the mid 1800s wasn't that many people living there at the time so it didn't make a whole lot of difference today it would get kind of interesting Be a lot more destruction because there's a lot more there. Okay. That guy is hooked up. And yes, from the factory it had electrical insulating tape there. Pretty high tech -aroo. this battery kind of after the fact we have almost 3.8 volts okay most of this is straightforward for this little short LCD connector uh, you want to put it on this side first and I forgot this little Insulation sheet that goes there. Okay. This is kind of a pain because you've got to do all this fooling around just to get it connected for testing. I'll get lucky and find a longer one of these cables or make a breakout board or something just to hook an LCD up for testing. That would be a lot more convenient. Okay, anyhow, that's the plan. Uh, once I get this cover situated, then we'll plug in the LCD cable to the LCD unit itself and then we'll try it out okay I forgot to hit record uh, so I'm going to recreate this this is going to be a dramatic reenactment so plug the power in and there may have been just the briefest of flashes there sometimes it'll do that when starting up hit the 
power button and it works. So this is probably just a duff memory battery that keeps the voltage on the reset circuitry low and it won't reset. Now this looks great. I think we, when we unplugged the, or separated the two halves, we unplugged the ribbon cable from inside. Got it connected here and I forgot to put this on from the inside. So I got to take it back apart anyhow. And the trick to getting these guys disconnected is to push in on the center of this while you're kind of doing this number. It's a ridiculous system, but I guess it does kind of work. I notice if we adjust the contrast just right on this LCD, it's got a missing stripe here. That could be in the LCD glass itself. It could also be a zebra stripe issue. Um, but... I don't have zebra strips for these, so it's something we can't do anything about. I did notice there was a wonky spring contact on one of the, the battery contacts. We'll take a look at that, too. Okay, see how that's bent there? Luckily, this is just a shorting bar. There's no wires hooked to it, so it may not be too difficult to get him out of there, hopefully. Okay, I'm going to try to pop that guy out of there and then we'll see if we can straighten it or find a replacement. The trick to getting the spring out of there is there is a little nub right here that the bottom loop catches on. So you need to take a really small screwdriver and put in here and kind of pry this out and then use a larger screwdriver to lift up here and you can pop it over that nub. It's the same on both sides. Uh, I'm not sure how this guy got so bent up. It's not really corroded or anything. I don't know if we can straighten this maybe. Okay, let me go see if any of the replacements I have will work in place of this. So it's still looking rather wonky. So the replacements I have um, aren't quite right. The coil is slightly larger. And the center to center distance is different. see there because this has this bar in between the two batteries they're not side by side so um, I guess I'll try to continue to straighten this the other thing I could try to do is unwrap each side of this about a quarter of a wrap it would reduce the diameter and might stretch it out enough to work so uh, we'll come back and see what we wound up with Okay, using a couple small pair of needle noses, I got this bent around till it, uh, when it's installed, it looks pretty much like normal and I've got some batteries here, so we'll put those in and see if it makes contact like it should. Okay. And... Yeah, that's what I thought. Screen on, or screen up. Yay, okay. Again, these screens aren't the greatest. It's a little hard to see, but our battery contacts now work. And um, the memory battery uh, installation fixed the problem. We still have our missing stripe in here but we can't really do anything about that at this juncture i'm going to let this run for a few hours to make sure everything is okay and then we'll get it back to its owner well how about that that was a really odd symptom uh just plugging it in and having the screen flash like that and do strange things uh, very easy to get led down the primrose path when you have strange symptoms like that um, because I've worked on a lot of these and I know that 
uh, when that memory battery is low, it can do everything from not booting at all to all sorts of strange things. Um, that was the first place I looked. I've not seen this exact symptom though, where the screen just sat there and flashed like that. That was a new one. Um, it, you know, it could make you think, oh, you know, the something on the the bus is you know stuck and it's not booting properly and it's stuck in a loop, something like that. But that wasn't the case. It was just that battery. It's kind of interesting. But we also got to fix that spring contact for the AA holder, so that was nice. Got that back in uh, working condition too. This works great, uh, minus that one row on the LCD, but can't win them all. Anyhow, this was a quick video. Uh, just thought I'd share it with you because of the interesting symptoms. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them in that comment section down there below. Thanks to everyone who helps support the Hate Burt channel through Patreon and other means. It is greatly appreciated, and until next time, bye.